In this example, we're going to work with standard deviations and calculate standard deviations using the same principles that we've used for confidence intervals of means and proportions, but there's a few, um, few differences that we need to pay attention to. I also, in this problem, deliberately uh, gave us raw data values instead of the sample statistics. It puts in an extra step in the calculation, but it's realistic. In a lot of the cases, when you start out with the problem, you'd have the raw data values, and you'd have to calculate the sta sample statistics yourself. So here's the situation. We're doing a study for a bank, and there's two different ways that they can cue their customers to while they're waiting for a teller. I can either use a single line that feeds all three tellers, or I can have three separate lines that each line uh, dedicated to a single teller. The values in the rows there are the uh, waiting times in minutes it, that we uh, measured in those days. And we want to find confidence intervals for the standard deviation of the waiting time and then interpret the results and see if we can come to any meaningful conclusion. So let's begin with the first situation where the bank is using a single waiting line that feeds all three tellers. First, as we always do in these problems, we uh, verify the requirements and identify the parameter. Well, in this case, we're studying a sigma. It's a standard deviation of the waiting time, and it's measured in minutes. And this is the sigma for the case where a single waiting line is used. When we study standard deviation or variances, we have to use the chi-square distribution. And in order to use it in the technique that we studied in class, we have to be confident that the data we're sampling from comes from a normal distribution. It's a little bit different than with the proportions and means where we could, if the sample size was large enough, sample from any distribution, whether normal or skewed or bimodal but it's different when we're studying a standard deviation. In this case, we must be confident that the distribution we're sampling from is normal. Otherwise, a chi-square distribution doesn't give good results. So we're going to assume that. It's reasonable to assume that the uh, waiting times are normally distributed, and we'll proceed. In this case, the sample size is 10. I have uh, 10 uh, waiting times. I'll have to use one var stats on my HP calculator to find S. So it'll be one var stats. Uh, you'll put all these numbers up here in L1, and then do a one var stats L1. And remember to read S sub X on the TI calculator. S sub X is our sample standard deviation, and that's the one we're looking for. N is equal to 10. And the chi-squared, like the t-distribution, has a second uh, argument. That's the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. OK, so it's a 95% confidence interval. Alpha over 2 is 0.025. Now we need to find those critical values. Now this is another place where the chi-squared distribution is different. It's not symmetric. So there are two distinct critical values when we denote them as chi-squared left and chi-squared right. For the Z and T distribution, the left and right critical values were the same within a minus sign. So we could really get away with just calculating one of them. Uh, and you notice in the formula it was X bar plus or minus E. And we could do that because the e, the margin of error to the right and the left, were the same because our distribution was symmetric. Now it's a little more complicated. I will have to go to the trouble to find two different critical values. So let's see how to do that on the next slide. This is going to be from table A4 in your book. It gives the critical values for chi-squared distribution. Similar to the t-distribution, the left column uh, gives you the degrees of freedom. In this case, the degrees of freedom is 9, so I read down to 9, and that gives me my row that I'm working with. Now, 
<coughs> recalling I need a chi-squared left and a chi-squared right. Well, the chi-squared left critical value will have 0.975 area to the right. Now, this is different in the uh, and another confusing point. When we use inverse norm and inverse t on our calculator, the calculator gives us requires us to provide actually area to the left. But in this table it's organized according to area to the right. So on the left critical value at a 95% confidence interval I have 0.975 area to the right. And reading where the two columns intersect I see that critical value is 2.7. Now over here I have the chi-squared right critical value. It's the same row but it's going to be a different column. And now when I'm at the right critical value, the area to the right is 0.025, and where this column and the previous row intersect is 19.023. So those are my two critical values. Now let's calculate uh, our inequality. For a chi-square distribution, when we're studying a standard deviation, we basically skip steps 4 and 5 they're all really both of them are embedded in the next step when we calculate the inequality. That's the formula for the inequality and notice here that's the inequality for sigma squared, the variance. Now in this problem we're going to be interested in the standard deviation. We'll start out by calculating an interval for the variance and then take the square root to get a corresponding interval for the standard deviation. So substituting uh, my data in for the formula, I get that equation and end up with this inequality. Now, since I do want the sigma naught sigma squared, I'm going to take square root of everything in the above here, and I end up with 0.33 is less than sigma is less than 0.087, excuse me, 0 0.87, and my units are minutes and this is a confidence interval for the standard deviation of the waiting time. My final sentence then would be along the lines, I'm 95 percent confident that the standard deviation of waiting time of customers at a bank that uses a single waiting line is between 0.33 and 0.87 minutes. Now of course we have the other option where the bank uses three separate lines and each line is dedicated to a different teller. We would go through the same steps to find the 95 percent confidence interval. Our data values are given here. We'd use one var stats to find the sample standard deviation and in this case you'd see it's 1.822. I'd substitute my values. The chi-squared left and right critical values will be the same. Nothing that's still the same. It's 10 data values, so the degrees of freedom is 9. And the only thing different in these equations really are the S's up here in the top. When you substitute in the values, you get this confidence interval for sigma squared, or the variance. Once again, since we're interested in sigma, not sigma squared, we have to take the square root. And when we do that, we get 1.25 is less than sigma, is less than 3.33 minutes. And now let's interpret our results. We calculated two 95% confidence intervals. For the single waiting line, that was the confidence interval. For the three waiting lines, that's the confidence interval. Now notice these confidence intervals do not overlap. The confidence interval for three waiting lines is to the right of, those values are to the right of or greater than the confidence interval for a single waiting line. So our data does support the claim that the standard deviation of a waiting time with a single line is smaller than the standard deviation of the waiting time when uh, three lines are used. Notice we haven't said how big the difference is but we've just claimed that there is a difference.